Welcome to our lecture online. In this video, we're going to attack the catenary problem when H and S are given. And here we have the example. H and S are given. We're not given the other three variables. And for reference, I kept the three examples from the previous video up there so you can compare the various things that were given. So if H and S are given, you will solve this problem in a slightly different fashion. You're going to use these equations right here to help you find C. So what we're going to write here, so we're going to write that T minus T sub naught, that's the tension at the high contact point and the tension at the lowest point in the cable. When we take the difference between the, those two, we can say that's equal to the weight per unit length times Y minus the weight per unit length times C, which we can factor out weight per unit length times y minus c, and that is equal to, well, y minus c, that would be this minus this gives us the lag in the cable, so this is the weight per unit length times h. And of course, that's where y minus c equals h comes from, which is this equation right here. Then we're going to do this again, but in this case, instead of writing t equals the weight per unit length times y, we're going to use this equation right here. So we're going to write, this is equal to weight per unit length times the square root of c squared plus s squared is equal to weight per unit length times y minus weight per unit length times c. Now notice that we have a weight per unit length in each term of the equation, and now let me get rid of that here, so that this is equal to this. And then we can see that we can cut out the weight per unit length or factor out the weight per unit length for each, which means that the square root of c squared plus s squared is equal to y minus c. I'm now going to square both sides of the equation. So I get c squared plus s squared is equal to y squared minus twice the product of those two, which is y times c plus c squared. And then notice that we can cancel out a c squared on both sides. And now we have an equation with only one c in there. If I move this to the other side and move this over here, I can now write that c is equal to y squared minus s squared. By moving the s squared to the right side, it becomes minus. And then divide both sides by the coefficient of c, which is 2 times y. And here we now have a new equation to solve for c in the case that we're only given h and s. So then we find c in this fashion. Then you can say, all right, if I know what c is equal to and h was given, I can then use the equation that y is equal to h plus c to find y. And now I have c, y, h, and s. There's only one more thing I need to find, which is x. How do I find x? Well, let's go back up here and say, well, let's start with this equation right here. So we're going to, to find x. We're going to take y is equal to c times a hyperbolic cosine of x over c, which means that y over c is equal to the hyperbolic cosine of x over c. And then if I take the inverse of the hyperbolic cosine, I can say that x over c is equal to the inverse of the hyperbolic cosine of y over c, which by now I know, because I know y from here, and I know c from there. And so finally, I can say that x is equal to c times the inverse of the hyperbolic cosine of the quantity y over c. And this is then what gives me x. So I started with h and s. I used this equation to find c. Then I found y using this equation. And finally, I found x using this equation, which then tells me I know y, x, c, h, and s. And now that I have all five variables, I can go ahead and find everything else I need to know about the cable. So you can see it's a slightly different process we need to use if only h and s are given compared to the other three examples. But now that you've seen those three examples and this example, you can pretty well solve any problem they may throw at you. And that's how it's done.